Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. Just wanted to wish y'all a Merry Christmas. Um, and just kind of share a dream with you that I had about it. And just kind of just talk a little bit about it. But really, you know, it's, it is a season of joy. It should be a season of great joy. I'm going to give you a couple scriptures. Um, I'll try to make this really brief because I know everybody's, you know, kind of busy. And, you know, maybe you can watch it after the holidays too, but whatever. But, um... I'm going to share this dream with you first, and then I'm going to give you the couple scriptures that go along with it. But in this dream on the 23rd, um, God spoke to me and he said, We've got it wrong, the birth of his son. I'm like, okay, God. He's like, it's every day. I'm like, okay, God. He's, and he's like, My son is being born into people's lives and bringing new life into their life every day. So when people become born again, it's not just us changing. It's Christ being born into us so that we can go and come into the full inheritance of God's salvation plan, becoming His sons. So those are the scriptures I'm going to share with you. But, so, we kind of put stuff around it, you know. It's one day out of the year, and it's a season, and everybody's nice, and people are just kind of, but it's like, all this commercialism, and buying presents, and, and it's like, it's okay for kids, kind of, you know, but it's like, man, you know, somebody buys me a cheap belt, and it's like, if I need a belt, I'll go get one. Well, really, I really will tell my wife, because that's how I you know, shop. Because she's going to want to pick it anyhow. Um, me, I'm going to run in and grab one that looks like it fits, and I'm out the door. She's going to spend, you know, 30 minutes finding the right one. Okay. You know, but... So... And then we put emphasis on stuff. I'm getting to the, to the point of this. He was dealing with me about being his temple. Us being his temple. But, so, and then I go to Sam's to get stuff for, for work, and it's like 20 30 $50 items, aisles full of stuff, everywhere you go is stuff, $500 Christmas trees, like, who can buy a $500 plastic Christmas tree? We put all this emphasis on commercial stuff and things instead of on Jesus being in our hearts. That's what he dealt with me about two weeks ago. I was sitting in my house, and my wife and I ministered at a homeless shelter in downtown Dallas every Sunday night. And I was just being th I was in the room, and it was raining, and I was in a guest room actually, and it was raining, and I was like, it was cold out, and I was like, thank you God that you know I have a nice house, and it's you know warm and I'm out of the elements and I was just thinking about those people and the life that they're, they're living and under some cold bridge if they even got a bridge or just I've seen them just walk around out in the rain it's just like man God you know thank you and he said man built this house and I'm like oh God man built this house contractor or whomever you know and he said but I built it in my temple and my people And consider that. So that's the kind of the that's where my just is in this, in, this, in this season, and that you know. And so there's a couple of scriptures that I'm going to read, and then it'll make some sense. Second Corinthians five. For you know that if our earthly house, this tent, destro is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in whom, for in this great, in this we grow earnestly, des desiring to be clothed with our habitations, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, 
that mortality may be swallowed up by his by by life now he who has prepared for this very thing is God who also giving us the spirit of as a guarantee that's the Holy Ghost guys Holy Spirit as a guarantee he, he wants us to be an inherit sonship man or woman and that's why it's Christmas every day Christ in you, the hope of glory. Every day, guys. So we need to just kind of not not lose sight of that and not put it all in all this other stuff and things that are going on all around us. And I mean, the retail and just, just stuff, you know. Things and presents. And, it's like yesterday I went to the homeless shelter to minister on Sunday night. My wife... We had a family emergency, so we just couldn't, we weren't prepared like we needed to be to have anything for the Sunday night, and my wife still had a bunch of stuff to wrap because all last week she just couldn't get to it because we had some stuff that we would take care of with our family out of town. So I said, oh, well, I'll go, honey, because I feel like it's important that, you know, we show up and go and preach the word and, you know, minister to these people, even though we weren't going to be able to have a Christmas party or anything for them. But well, that's just stuff. So, but, you know, like you tell Peter, feed my sheep. So it's like, okay, God, I'm just going to go and feed him the real gospel, the truth. And, you know, we're really the bread of life versus the bread of, you know, eating today. Cookies and all kinds of stuff. But, so I get there, and there's like hundreds of people, it seemed like. The parking lot was just full. And they have a Christmas program in the church, which is okay. We, we probably would have thought about it too. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm like, wished him well and told him, I said, well, I'm just going to go home and finish out my wife, you know, do her stuff. And so, but I wanted to see a couple of people before I left. One of the pe guys that works there and wished him a Merry Christmas. And he's a really godly man. man. And I wanted to at least see him. He said, man, he said, sorry I didn't call you, but this is kind of like the Super Bowl for us. People in some lady had a big cart full of bread they couldn't even take because so many people had given them stuff. And it's like, man, but where are all these people all year long? <clears throat> Just at Christmas. Yeah, it's, you know, sort of a noble cause, but that's all. We need to look at the temple, consider the temple. And not all this stuff. Oh, I fed the I fed him, you know, a meal, or I bought him cookies and cakes and candy or whatever at Christmas, or I I did this or I did that, you know. One day out of the year, I did my duty, you know, or whatever, you know. It's just it's just stuck, guys, that we kind of get sidetracked on, and when we lose we lose we lose sight of the reality of the temple that God created, which was mankind. Your brother natural brother maybe, your wife, maybe your children, maybe your pastor at church, the guy sitting next to you or a gal sitting next to you in a cubicle or in your office. Um, just because my wife and I my wife and I were drawn to the brokenness of the broken hearted people because, you know, we have some of that as our, as our history and our past, both of us, so we can relate to those people. Kinda like if you had cancer and were healed of cancer you can associate with somebody that's in that same position. I can talk to them and it's kind of like an armchair quarterback, you know. It's not really, I can't really feel all that. I can kind of, I can em empathize with them, you know. I have empathy for them, but I don't know what they faced. So, you could be an executive and make, make $250,000 a year but, and, you know, decide to go out for a steak dinner that costs 600 bucks. Well, I wouldn't, but that waitress might, waiter or waitress might be, you know, they need God too. They need Jesus too. It's just souls, God. We need to consider the temple and quit looking at stuff, you know? I mean, we put emphasis on man-made temples, going to some of these cathedrals and churches and stuff. It's like all this stuff, this extravagant, gaudy, a lot of them is extravagant, gaudy, expensive stuff structures and buildings and more programs and bigger bands and accommodate more people and 
why do you want to bring in more people though? What are you feeding them? Really, are you giving them the truth of the gospel? Of Jesus living in us. God living in us. The Holy Spirit living in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, you know, the hospitals are full of people that are dying and about to slip into eternity. Are we going there? Are we going to the nursing homes? Are we going to the jail houses? Are we, re you know, mental institutions? Are we reaching our, like I said, the people in the cubicle next year at work? Maybe going through a horrendous divorce or something, you know, traumatic in their life where they may have a, a, a you know, a, a, a person in their life that's really ill or a kid on drugs or, just, you know, any number of things. We need to consider the temple. That's what he was telling me. Consider the temple. Then he took me to a month or so ago. It was part of another message he gave for me and my wife. But he said, Genesis 1 and 26 was part of what he's giving me. And I'll, one day I'll minister on that dream. It was a totally different dream. But So God... Then God said... Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let us them have dominion over the fish and the sea, over the birds in the air. And every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. It kind of cuts, cuts the chase of, you know, a lot of this garbage that we hear about, you know, women being less than type thing. I mean, you hear it in the it's in the Bible, blah blah blah, da da da. Women should be silent, da 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 da. da. It's like God didn't say that in the beginning. He said He created a male and female. He didn't take half the world and shut it up. Sorry, guys. You know, what about the Esther? But anyhow, it, we need to consider the temple. And it cuts across the race issues, too. Black, white, green, yellow. Russian people need to be saved. Vladimir Putin needs the salvation of Jesus. I don't know that he's ever going to get there. It doesn't look like it, but I'm not God. So, you know, we need to consider the temple instead of all this other stuff. And it's a move of God and a revival or just chasing stuff a lot of it for self-motivating gloating egotistical reasons read Matthew 20 the quality pieces there were all paid the same God created a temple to dwell in and we need to consider that the guy next to us the bum on the street the you know, why is there the story of the Good Samaritan? You know, that guy was beat up, tore up, and people just walked right by him. On, he went to, out of their way to get up on the other side of the road to get away from him, you know? This, the times that we're in may not look like we want it to. We may not be on TV and in the limelight and have thousands of people following us. Maybe. But maybe not. It might be in the dark corner in the alleyway in the filth and vomit and the just the messiness of life. Reaching that soul. Or souls. Or our children. <coughs> Christ in you the hope of glory. So anyhow, it's a Merry Christmas, but it's an all season long and you know, we put too much emphasis you know, we put too much emphasis on and some you know don't even some 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 people in in church don't even like Christmas trees. You know they they're like against it. And it's like I heard one guy got 15 trees. I'm like man, you know we can emphasize too much stuff, too many things that aren't. And God's telling tell us to consider the temple, His temple, where He dwells. That's a true miracle of Christmas. His birthday every day, new in somebody's life. Bringing new life, being born again, ushered in to the eternal things of life. Not this carnality and 
stuff going on all around and there's just so many distractions I mean internets phones cars houses and I get it you know your car needs oil changing you gotta have a job I understand there's stuff that has to get taken care of you gotta plan for your kids college or whatever you know or you might be in college and there's just a lot of work or whatever you know I, I get it I understand that so does God, but he doesn't want us to take our focus off of the true meaning of it, which is his temple. And it may be the guy next to you, or gal, black or white. Maybe you have all kinds of sexual immorality issues, or drugs, or, or none of the above, or just be a businessman, but not very ethical. Or maybe just be somebody that's already 90% pure and clean without spot, blemish, or wrinkle, but maybe there's still something else they need in their life. Or maybe they need Christ for, that they don't even have in their life. So it's kind of like He's got a purpose for all of us. Whether you're, it doesn't, you know, we put emphasis on status and power. I mean, look at the, what goes on in the church world. It's, and in the world, it's power, money, sex. Kind of Jesus is taking on the equation of a lot of this, guys. I'm not trying to be pre preach a critical message because I'm, you know, it's about Christ and you, the hope of glory, and we're in a glorious hour. And it's like directing, I'm directing you to Jesus. Put him back in your life, wherever it looks like, instead of all this other stuff. That's what he was telling me about the house, that man built the house. we got to get our eyes and focus off of just things that really don't have any matter. It's just, a, you know, some of it's a tool the enemy uses to try to distract us from the real meaning of Christmas, of the season, of Jesus' birth. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's every day portray them out there in, in, in our lives and in the way we treat our husbands or wives or children or our co-workers or our, or our pastors or the evangelists you know pray for them if God's highlighting something in somebody's life you, you know he showed me some things and I'm like man God I just assumed you didn't even show me that I want to know that some of them some of them are great and awesome and a few of them aren't that great it's like but it's an opportunity to pray for that person or maybe it's something in my life maybe I need some cleaning up in that area I, you know bring it to him first before we just start spouting it out I can say with some authority about what I'm saying about the church world because it's all around and I see it and God and I'm still working on delivery I'm, I'm not trying to be that critical hypocritical God because my robe wasn't always what I have a prodigal son experience but I really get the grace piece now. I saw the grace God had in my life after I made a mess of it. Even after knowing the truth. And when you tell some people that, like, you know, you get the stink eye or that you had a drug problem or, you know, whatever, you know. It's like, you need to consider the temple that God created. And there's probably a reason and a purpose why he's got you in other people's lives. There are not, not probably, there is a reason and a purpose. I'm going to end with this. Read Colossians 3.16. Because God told me that in a dream that Colossians 3.16 was just as important as John 3.16. I'm like, wow, John 3.16 is an awesome scripture. One of the best. If there is a best. Colossians 3.16 is kind of about how we entreat each other. And talk to each other in the body. Read it. Um, it's awesome. But anyhow, that's the, the real reason behind the season. Jesus in our lives. Portraying Him to others. Expanding, building out your sphere of influence or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, children, husbands, wives, like I said, workers at church, the guy at 7-Eleven, the the, the gal at Subway, you know, the person at Walmart, you know, instead of all this commercial, you know, I'm sorry, kind of even paganistic stuff, you know. It's like, man, guys. 
every day we should look at at those people not just once a year and try to stamp it on some holiday say we're doing something for God you know one day out of the year or whatever you know there's uh, uh, I mean it's like it should be always constantly on your mind and I get it sometimes you know you may have a job that's like an executive type job or whatever that is a mental challenge and it's just kind of hard to break through when your mind's all just focused on that stuff you know I'll, I'll say this last thing it's it's like all the retail world and stuff and the swirl of it it's like Sundays and Saturdays and you know every day you know I won't name the company but there's big companies that are like man we gave everybody a job well they're underpaying them for one most of them and then a lot of them have to get food stamps and other things because of it because they're getting underpaid they're not really doing you a favor by giving you a job it's designed to make money you're a cash register it's what we call it human resources a resource is a dump truck or my car or maybe the oil in the ground but people, come on guys, we're his temple. And treat each other like that. The holiness of it. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I get it, we can get all opinionated and swirled up and twisted up. and I understand, me too. I'm not throwing stones. I'm not, you know, I, I got issues too. I got to work through stuff too. I got to pray through things too. Some people that I may not like or disagree with or whatever, you know, I gotta, you know, okay, God, what are you trying to show me? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Bring it to Christ. Bring it. Feed it through the Holy Ghost, the Word, God, ask God, ask Jesus, who's your source. Where's temple, guys? So treat each other like that. And treat each other like that with respect and love and honor. Because where's glory? We should get great joy in seeing others succeed in the gospel. And as they get victorious in their life. And it's not, it's not all, money's not the big blessing, guys. The windows of heaven, open up the windows of heaven. You won't be, have room enough to contain it. Everybody thinks that they're going to get a pot of gold poured down upon them. God's not a big ATM, guys. I'm sorry. I get it. You need money. You know, my wife and I have given us places to go. We've been all over from Pennsylvania to Illinois to, I don't have a car to get there and gas. And I get it. And pay for the hotels. I understand that piece of it. But just because, you know, we put emphasis on stuff. Splendor and grandiose and, you know, it's because you got a pile of money that's God's blessing on your life. Maybe, maybe not. A lot of ungodly businesses out there that are making a ton of money. This country is in trouble over money. The government had to shut down. We're supposedly the richest, most powerful nation in the world. Why isn't there any money in the bank to pay the bills? That's a whole other message. Look at my economic collapse message. But And there's even more to it. But it's going to take Jesus to be in that temple. I pray for those people, those 800,000 people that kind of got... You know, do you, would you want to go to work and not you know when, when you're going to get paid and not have got a check and not have an attitude because it'd be like, man, you know, I mean, look at the Secret Service people or just pick pick any of them. But I'm just picking on them, but man, they're sticking their necks out on the line and some of them, you know, and just really, you know, and, and, and not get an attitude, you know, why am I not getting paid? And that's a whole mess. A lot of ego in that, really, honestly. That's a whole other message. But Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the message for this Christmas hour. How, how, how we entreat each other. That's a mess. That's not how we're supposed to entreat each other. That's just self. That's what I'm saying. Get out of self. Get out of customs and stuff and things and buildings and moves of God and this and that. And stuff that's nonsense. What are you doing to brother and sister? I'm not trying to, that's not a critical message. That's, you know, directing to the love. Love your brothers and sisters. Help them out if they need help. Pray for them if they need prayer. Get down and hands and knees, get dirty with them or whatever, you know? 
Instead, we want to be all polished and puffed and egotistical and look at me, look what I did for God. Really? Last thing. Gideon's army. Awesome, cool story. 300. We all want to shout the victory. God can do anything with just a handful, a little bit. A little bit more depth to that message, guys, than just that. That he won the victory with just not next to nothing. Kind of like the lows, the fishes and the lows, you know. A miraculous event, of course, absolutely. But earlier on, what did he tell Gideon when he had 33,000, how many ever it was? He said, I can't let the children of Israel win this battle with this many because they'll think they got the glory. They'll think they did it. Kind of where America's at, you know. We think we're this high and mighty and rich and pious nation. And the gods, guys, it's Jesus, guys. Not us. Not our brilliance. And I love this country. I'm thankful for it. But Jesus has to be the center of the equation. Just like he had to be the center of the equation in Gideon's army. God had to be the center. Well, Jesus at the time was God, but he had to be the center of everything. So, that's what I'm saying. It's a season. It's a reason. It's the whole dispensation of time. It's, you know, it is a Merry Christmas, but it's Christ in you. We're his temple. Treat each other like that. All the time, every day. Purpose driven, what God's showing you. Even if you don't, even if it's not flashy and you're not on TV or whatever, or, you know, somebody's not going to say, add a boy or whatever. What's God telling you to do? Do that. Be His glory. Portray His life. All, every single 24 7, seven days a week, wherever you go, restaurants, motels, work, church, whatever. And you get our focus off of stuff. But that's what's destroying our relationship with Him, is all the stuff. I want a nice car, of course, but do you need all that fancy stuff on it? Probably not. Most of it, no. Most of it's nonsense. Just kind of just feeding the flesh. Sorry. Same with a lot of the church buildings and programs and stuff and things that we do and we try to stamp God's name on it and hoodwink them kind of, oh, I did this for God. And look at all I'm doing. Really? Really? How are you treating the temple? His temple, his other people, the people around you, people next to you, the people in your closest circle, your wives, your children, your co-workers, the people sitting in, in the pew next to you at church. Instead of picking up offenses and opinions and things, and it's like, man, guys, we don't know what people have been through or how they got there or what's going on in their lives, you know? That's the last thing I'm going to end with. The Christmas story. We're God's Christmas story because we're His glory. So it's not about Christmas and presents and trees and... You know, I've been to the store in the last couple of days a lot. Well, my, wife, my wife forgot something just a minute ago, so she took the grandkids because I was like, man, I've been to the store... A lot, and I gotta go a couple more times. I gotta pick up the food. I gotta go here. I gotta go there. Still got this to do, and it's like, you know, I'm not gonna go to one more store. I've been, you know, the six, twelve times. I had to pray about it and say, God, don't let me get an attitude towards you because you forgot something. But still, it's like, man, I'm kind of tired of going to Walmart and to the store and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's like, you know, I kind of even how I made a list. It's like. So, if you get caught up in the commercialism and the retail and the same within the church, if you get caught up in what's going on all around us and supposed things that are moves of God, it's like, man, 
Lord, you're really moving. And get in our, getting in our hearts. And getting us to be the influence in others to get them in their hearts. To directing people to Jesus. Jesus every day. That's a Merry Christmas. Jesus every day. So, we love you guys. And that's what it's all about. Not about trees and Santa Claus. And Santa Claus is kind of, really, when you think about it, it's probably a little bore. You know, it's heading down paganism, really, honestly. Sorry. I've heard the stories and elves and reindeers. And it's like, okay. What's the necessity of all that, really? The real reason for the season is Jesus. But it's Jesus every day. That's the birthday. New life in someone every single day. And new hearts. Transformation. Be renewed by the renewing of your mind. Transform. New creatures. New creations. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's just, you know, look at some of my other messages, guys. It's not just me. There's a lot of good ministries out there and preachers out there and word out there. They just kind of sort through it because there's a lot of garbage, too. So I'm using the Holy Spirit, the spirit of discernment. Pick and choose carefully. What are you eating? I don't want you to listen to just. I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to the Bible. I want you to listen to God. I want you to listen to Jesus, the Holy Ghost. If it's something contrary to what I'm saying, then listen to that because it's not contrary. Don't listen to me. I'm not trying to be. I'm just a vessel. I'm a mailman. But I may get the address wrong a little bit. Or I may get. You know, I've gotten pieces of mail that belong to somebody else or five doors down or even in another whole other realm and st things happen far from perfect guys but I'm telling you the main direction the main thing is Christ in you the hope of glory get you to Jesus 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 because that's what God's ultimate plan was he's been unfortunately taken out because that's what the enemy wants to do if he couldn't deal with one Jesus how is he going to do it, deal with millions of us? Seriously. That's why he's mad, pissed, and angry. If you're not s speaking out that, he doesn't care. He'll let you be successful and do all kinds of stuff and not even get in the way and just because he's got you. Obstacles and roadblocks and hurdles just come, come flying at you when, when you get in his turf you get in his face and preach the truth Christ in you the hope of glory or his temple it says so in Genesis that he created and at the beginning he created us well Jesus was standing there in our image why did God say our image why did he say my image I'm it I'm the I'm the big big dog on the block. You know, he said him and our image, him and Jesus. Then he gave us guarantee the Holy Spirit that we could stand in this time. You know, there's a whole lot to it, guys, and that's why I can't ever really seem to not fin finish the messages. So you know, I hope somebody listened to the end of this, and you know, some other people do, some other they don't. You get about five minutes generally, it seems like. But anyhow, we love you guys. Merry Christmas. Seriously, Merry Christmas. Um, pray for those around you. Pray for, you know, just there's, this country needs prayer. We all need prayer. Seek God. What's He telling you to do? What's Jesus telling you to do? Where, who's your source? Where are you getting your information from? That's the other part, piece of this message. He wants to. He wants to live in you. And as he lives in you, he's remodeling, expanding, gotten out the kitchen to put a brand new kitchen in, doing all kinds of cool, marvelous, miraculous things in our lives, guys, and in others. And we should rejoice in the success of others in the gospel instead of trying to just do like the world and just 
the dog eat dog world, you know. And so it's kind of like a dog eat dog church. Man, guys. Time to consider the temple, which is your neighbor, your spouse, kids, coworkers. Guy at 7 Eleven, the gal at the subway, the person at Walmart or Home Depot or wherever you shop or whatever, you know. Instead of all this man made circus. If I put out the message about pray for Trump, Donald Trump, as a person. He's about to get the hammer put down on him. The world of hurt coming his way. He's going to need Jesus to see him through this. Because, you know, I'm not jumping on the Trump bandwagon and trying to politicize it. Or the hate bandwagon either. You know, I'll say this and, you know, agree half, maybe half won't. It, you know, I voted for the guy because I thought he would make a difference. But, you know, it's kind of coming out. But, you know, I mean, he... There's a lot of stuff in his business world that he's going to come into a world of hurt with some of this stuff, guys. So we need to pray for him and Melania and his kids as his temple. I don't want to. But we need to. We need to pray for all the, you know, all these people around him. We need to pray for Vladimir Putin, you know. Yeah, he's our enemy, of course. Because they just got this twisted up view of the world. I get it. I understand. But we need to consider the temple. And not everybody's going to be his temple. Because there's, wheat, there's the wheat and tear mixed. I understand that piece too. So, it's, it, it's just time to get to look for the, to, to consider the temple. The temple of Christ. Jesus Christ in you. The hope of glory. God manifested in you his image his purpose in your life and what he wants you to do and be and for instead of what I did for God what a move of God this is you know I've heard it I've heard a lot of them you know I'll, I don't even name them because it's like this move over here this move over there this move in Canada this move in Florida this move in you know California or this, it's like Time to get off of that, guys. And just do what he's telling you to do. Be his temple. And show it to others around you. And help lead them into the truth. And help them become the temple if they're not. And help them to realize and to become born again. And walk them through the salvation plan. And admonish and teach our children that and their spouses when they're grouchy are just kind of not where they need to be because they have to do the same for us Jesus had to do the same for us he has to put up with us a lot of stuff so let him work on you let him remodel you let him expand you let him mold and shape you and that we can be more of his image shine that light that city in a lost and dying world. It's a lot to it. I guess I need to probably end this because it's gotten pretty long. I didn't want it to get that long, but hopefully some of y'all will still read it. But anyhow, that's the season and the reason. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christmas every day. So, we love you guys. Um, thanks for listening. Um, I will get more. I wanted this to be five minutes and end up being 38. So, I don't know what to do, guys. Pray for me because I'm trying. It's just there's a lot going on that I want to get out there. So, Merry Christmas. Love you guys. Um, talk to you soon.